As a root gatherer and a forest farmer, I get out in the woods and I notice the populations of plants. Sometimes I find ginseng a lot easier than I can find these other herbs because I feel like there's been a little bit more stewarding that goes on with ginseng. They recognize that, hey, don't dig the little, plant the seed. We want to keep it there. But with some of these other herbs like black cohosh and golden seal and wild yam, they don't really seem to have that connection of when does this plant produce its seed, how does it reproduce, and how long does it take to grow? I'd like to see more forced farming of these plants, or if you are going to be a wild crafter, how do I educate you in a way to just partially harvest? My name is Terry Black, and um, we're here at Shaw Black Farm, located in Kenton County, Kentucky. Uh, we're part of the United Plant Savers Botanical Sanctuary. We got the property in 2009, planted our first seed in 2010, and then it's just been evolving ever since. You see them start to smile. In the state of Kentucky, ginseng is regulated through the Department of Agriculture. We have a dealer's program, and it's kind of focused more towards the wild ginseng than it, than it is towards forced farmed or cultivated. Uh, Kentucky is usually one of the leading states for the amount of ginseng that's, that's harvested every year. They're a little more strict, I guess, than other states when it comes to that. We, we cannot be in possession of seed. All seed must be planted within 50 feet of the mothering plant and we're not allowed to acquire rootlets unless the rootlets are five years or older. So it makes it really hard for a forest farmer. And that's one of the issues with forest farming ginseng is in Kentucky. Other states don't have that problem. Since the ginseng regulations are, are so strict here in Kentucky, I started to focus more on the other medicinal herbs that were bringing a high profit margin. So we, we started planting a little more black cohosh, incorporating blood root and golden seal onto our property and intensively forced farming the golden seal and the black cohosh now. Um, not quite as much ginseng anymore, although we still are going to continue to plant because it's so important to keep planting. I primarily sell nursery stock because if I'm planting these plants and I'm growing them for three to five to ten years, I kind of get attached to them and I kind of want to know what's going to happen to them and where they're going. With the nursery stock, I can say, hey, I sold this nursery stock to this forest farmer, and then I get these great pictures later on where the forest farmers will give me an update and they'll say, I got seed this year. I think that's great. That's probably more fulfilling to me is to see somebody else growing something that I started or I provided them than it does for me to dig up a bunch of roots and dry them and then just sell them. I like the Appalachian Beginning Forest Farmers Coalition because the workshops that I went to wasn't just geared towards ginseng. One thing that I noticed was that they were talking about the importance of the other herbs. They were had a high demand on black cohosh and they were encouraging the force grown verification of black cohosh and needing it from forest farmers and I really liked that and the networking with the people and being able to get out there. I, I can say that because of um, Appalachian Beginning Forest Farmers Coalition that I sold more planting stock last year than I would have necessarily in, um, in years past and that, that's directly due to Appalachian Beginning Forest Farmers Coalition and I thank them a lot for that.